Welcome to TV TV Sport. Tonight's coverage comes from the MA Hart Stadium where Christchurch hosts Bournemouth in the Sydenham's Wessex League Cup quarter final. The wind's picking up and that's dried the pitch out. Luckily the rain stayed away and I've got me trusty multicams deployed around the ground. The Christchurch team shows a fair few changes since the previous match I covered against Tamworthy. So they're making full use of the squad, which I guess they have to do because they got a fair few number of league games in hand. Tonight's officials are referee Simon Mitchum and assistant refs Jordan White and Lee Stevens. Although this is a cup match, the league should give us a decent indication of where it's going to go. Christchurch are currently sitting in fourth with games in hand, whereas Bournemouth are third from bottom in 18th. Current form doesn't read any better for the Poppies, they're second from bottom there, whereas Christchurch is second from top. Coming up on TV TV, on Saturday it's Wimborne Town against the Met Police, Tuesday Paul Town against Western Supermare, the Saturday after the 21st it's Christchurch against Ainsbury and then on the Tuesday after that the 24th it's Paul Town against Blackfield and Langley. But for now this match is booked to you by TV TV. The first attack came courtesy of this ball from Max Wilcock over to the right wing where Lucas Moraine was met by Andy Hustis in the Poppies goal. The resulting corner ended up on the head of Harvey Wright but his effort didn't look like it was going in but Hustis was taking no chances. Lucas Moraine was proving to be a thorn in the poppy's side. He was the one that was getting on the end of the chances. This one, he fired just wide. Church were piling on all the pressure. This effort from Ben Satterley pulled out a good save from Hustis and Wilcock thought he'd open the scoring. But the linesman had other ideas. It wasn't long after that that Wilcock wriggled his way into the box in between two defenders and goes down. The ref points to the spot and it's a pen. Say what you want about the challenges but I'm a big fan of the Poppy's number eight. Moraine steps up and Julie dispatches. Just a few minutes later, Lawrence Healy was leading the charge, only to be abruptly halted by the Christchurch defence. <laughs> 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 
in the formidable shape of Captain Billy Walker. Church keeper Frampton grabbed the resulting free kick at the second attempt. The wind was blowing in from right to left as we look at the pitch, and you could see that in the play. The Poppy's keeper was having trouble clearing upfield, and the corners were catching on the breeze. It was one of these corners that led to a big talking point just before half time. Lots of claims, but the ball was handled on the line. Even the lino was flagging, but we'll have a little look at that in a minute. <laughs> So, half time, and obviously Oli is unhappy saying that it's been handled on the line. And I'm no body language expert, but I reckon he's saying, look at the video. So, you know what? Let's look at the video. Let's start the slow mo in. Three, two, one. Now, I've looked at this, zoomed in, twisted around, done all sorts of contortions with it and I still can't tell whether that is the hand or not, or the arm. So, on the basis that the ref was in an excellent position, I'm going to say he got it right. We're just over five minutes into the second half now, and Christchurch is still dominating. And you have to say that finish by Nick Swan was top draw. 52 minutes in, and it's Christchurch 2, Bournemouth 0, and Christchurch are well in control. And when you're just having one of those nights, this sort of thing usually happens. Moraine's shot is deflected high into the night air by Spencer Churchill. And then to me, it looks like Luke Stone has taken on the role of ultimate poacher. Because if you have a look at the reverse angle from behind the goal, I'm pretty sure he gets a touch before the ball goes over the line. <laughs> Church have credited Moraine with the goal, so I've gone with that. But, you know, this angle tells me something a little bit different. <laughs> What I really noticed was Frampton at the back barking out orders. Didn't matter what the score was, he was on it. Ed Gazan in the Poppies number seven was their most threatening player. Here he picks the ball up, runs of it well, gets a good strike away. Another feature of the host play that really stood out to me was their willingness to win the ball back. Now you might say, don't lose the ball so often, but when you do, this is the sort of thing you want to see from your team. This challenge from Jamie Trimble was a bit unnecessary and sparked off a bit of a confrontation. One of the poppy subs got a bit overexcited and uh, raced into the fray, but that only lands you one place, doesn't it? Into the referee's little black book. Full marks though for trying to disguise yourself with a scarf.
Now, if you thought the deflection for the third goal was unlucky, just feast your eyes on this. Luke Stone, nice and alert, and taking advantage of that terrible slice of luck. Poppy's number two, Santos, was uh, obviously distressed at this referee's decision. And in this clip, we've got John Blake giving it absolutely everything. Go on, son, keep going. If you could do a dance to show what it feels like to be 4 0 up in a quarter final, what would it be? Yeah, interesting. And it was only a few seconds after that terrible Strictly Come Dancing audition that the ref blew up for full time. Christchurch, comfortable winners, 4 0 and through to the semi. The Christchurch Man of the Match Award goes to Ben Satterley. I hope you've enjoyed the coverage. If you have, give my YouTube channel a little subscribe and I'll catch you next time.